Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs. So today we're going to do a little bit of a work in progress video of repairing these Batman ears. Now, uh, I just glued on this piece here. You can see that crack going across it, but you can really see it really over there. So uh, what I did is I glued on that piece. I'm going to let it sit a little bit. I'm going to hit it with some Instaset. Uh, if you watch some of my past videos, I use BSI glues. This gel is great. And then uh, you can get Instaset when, when you uh, spray it on real quick. It pretty much uh, sets the glue. It doesn't really hurt any of your paints. Um, see how it does bleed? You just kind of let it dry. Uh, like factory paint is really not going to do anything. You know, it doesn't really come up or anything like that. Uh, maybe some other paints like some acrylic paint and stuff uh, from in, like in the USA might bring it up. But you just let it sit and dry. It's not going to do anything. It evaporates pretty fast. So once that's set up, uh, my next step is uh, you got to kind of secure it and I'm going to kind of drum wilds. It's going to be like a staple effect and you'll see what I mean. But I have these brass rods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a brass rod in here like that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go up to the tip with this one because it's too thick. I might need a thinner one. I do have this small piece here. The small piece, but it might I might need a thinner one. So I'm going to put a little bit of a thin one up there and a thin one up there. And then I'm going to work out the tips. And then once everything's said and done, you sand it down and then you match up the paint. But uh, it just gives you guys an idea on how I kind of repair ears. And uh, it's not just a simple... Because if you just glue it on and then you seam it up, you could still... Like, glue really keeps pieces together. Um, but, like, one solid piece of polystone resin is going to be much stronger. So, in theory, you could kind of, like, you know, kind of give this a flick and it'll just break off right again. I mean, like, you know, you're just giving this, like, a little bit of a flick here. It's not doing much. But here, if I do that... It probably will pop right off, so you got to kind of secure it. So, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. Once all this kind of evaporates and dries, I'm going to do some Dremel work, and we'll come back, and I'll show you how I kind of get in the metal rods and how I fix that up. So, as you guys can see, I filled this in with Aves, and I put a little piece of rod in there as well, and I did all the way around. So that's all got to be sanded down. I uh, I had to build up a little bit because even though I glued the piece as firm as possible, no matter how many times I try to glue something, even though it's cracked perfectly good, sometimes it's you still get it's never even. So I got to kind of build it out and sand it down and even it up. So what I did is I put these two little pieces of rod in the tips, as you can see. And I'm going to put Aves on that. And I'm going to build it up. It's going to look really nasty. But when I sand it down, I'll get it all nice and flush. But this helps me uh, get the Aves up there. And it stays in pretty well. Because uh, you could still kind of chip it off. At least this gives it some kind of a support. So uh, let's get that going. <laughs> Alright, 
so as you saw, I built out the tips, and it looks really nasty and everything, but that's all going to get sanded down. Uh, the reason why I like to build it up thicker is because as you go sanding it down, it, it helps to keep it sturdier. If you try to just do the tip, and then you, you don't really get enough meat, I guess you could say like the aged meat on top of the other polystone resin, it, you just wind up breaking it off. You know, it just kind of breaks off, and it just becomes more of a pain to keep trying to get a perfectly piece on now it's better to build it off and then sand it down and keep it thicker and just take your time so that's pretty much where that's at so it's going to take you know i probably won't get back to this to like the weekend anyway but it's going to take a little while to get done and then once that's all said and done we'll touch up the paint and go from there all right guys so it's the next day i'm going to go into the garage and i'm going to sand down these ears get them ready for paint uh i'm not going to really film it because it's just me sitting there sanding it down plus i need to get in close and i need to make sure i'm getting everything nice and even and stuff so these are the sandpapers i use it doesn't matter what color sandpaper you use it's all about the grit and uh getting the stuff fine-tuned so i got these at home depot uh it's the basic 3m stuff so here's the 100 uh grit and here's the 220 uh, this is uh, super fine foam stuff uh, from 3M. Can't get this stuff at Home Depot anymore. You have to order it through different websites. I don't know why I don't carry it anymore. But anyway, so uh, what I'll do is I'll use the 100 grit, which is coarser, to get all this uh, thicker stuff down. And once I'm starting getting down and I'm going to start fine tuning the ear, I'll go to the finer stuff, the 220. And then once it's pretty much where I want it, I'll kind of smooth it out with the foam stuff. Now, this foam, this one piece here is still fairly coarse because I haven't used it that much but this little piece I've used so much that it's really fine and then once all that's done uh, you know you could prime the stuff but with the A's and everything there it's gonna be fine well I'll use some maybe like Tamiya like chrome silver paint I'll paint that on there because it acts like a primer and if there's any kind of cracking or any kind of stuff that's kind of I missed I'll use my uh, Tamiya putty and I'll putty it in and then we go to and we'll touch up all the paint so I'm gonna head into the cold garage and get that done and then uh, we'll be back. All right, so I just got out of the cold garage and I uh, sanded down the ears and nice and smooth. Uh, it looks a wreck, but it's really not. Uh, once I put some of the chrome silver paint on there from the Tamiya, it'll uh, come together very nicely. If there's any kind of errors or anything, then I could kind of hit it with the putty. But as you can see right here at the tip of my finger, there's a little bit of that metal rod sticking out right there. I guess after I pushed the top there, this end must have came out a little bit, but that's fine. It doesn't feel like it's sticking out, but it might be. It's kind of hard. If it is, I have a Dremel tool where it grinds down metal real fast, and I can just hit the tip of that tool on there and then hit it with some putty, and I'll be fine. You just want to make sure it's all smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off the face. Uh, I think I'm painting the face. I don't really remember. I'll have to check the notes again, but I'm just going to mask off the face anyway because I don't want anything hitting this just in case. And then uh, I'm going to hit it with the Tam Tamiya Chrome Silver and then let that dry and see if I need to do any more touch-ups. If not, then I'll just uh, finish painting them up and we'll go from there. Alright, so I did the Chrome Silver and it's all looking good. Uh, this piece over here is looking pretty good. A little bit of a piece over here. It's still got to dry a little bit. That's got to be sanded down. This side looks pretty good. Uh, this side looks a little bit good, but that little tiny piece is still sticking out. So I'm going to have to hit that with the Dremel tool. And I did miss this little part over in here. And i got to sand that down. And once all this is uh, sanded down and nice and fine-tuned, I can actually go ahead and uh, paint it up for good.
All right, so uh, I got it all touched up now. Uh, I did a little bit of extra blending here on the mask, as you could kind of see. I didn't like the way this was all, it was like this was shaded black and then this was all rubbed off and it just looks very weird having this really crazy blue eyebrow and then this was just all black. So I just kind of wanted to blend this all out and give it more of that darker mask look as you can kind of see. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pry off all the uh, uh, silly putty and we'll come back and we'll look at it once it's all said and done because I think there was a mark over here. Actually we just do it right now since we're pretty good. See there's like a little bit of a a little smudge over here. I gotta touch that up. Uh, I was looking at the notes, so we're not actually doing the the face. Just pretty much a repair and blending it all. So as you can see, this is what the face looks like now. So it's a little bit more blended, as you can see. We got all the repairs going. So we got a nice, just darker, darker looking mask now, and it's just more blended. Uh, I was just going above and beyond and just kind of really clean it up for the client because it just looks very weird just having that rubbed off area. But I darkened up the eyes a little bit more, at least the socket, so now we got the white eyes really popping out a little bit more. So I'm just going to touch that up and we'll be all done. So uh, hopefully you guys like the video, it gives you guys some ideas if you ever have to do uh, ear repairs or anything that's got like kind of a point that you got to really secure. Uh, it's just got to pretty much uh, set up. I'm going to just kind of... Give a little bit of a dull coat, uh, nothing too much, just to kind of seal it. But I'm going to let the paint dry a little bit. I want to let this cure only because it's raining outside and very cold. So it might take a little bit longer. But uh, once I get all that done, uh, then it's off to the client. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll be back with some more videos.